This video is an introduction to bottleneck analysis. And bottleneck analysis looks at capacity of a system, say uh, a, a series of processes in a service context or uh, a series of stations in a, uh, in a production line and, and looking at which of those operations or which of those service processes constrain the system or, or become the bottleneck, which are, this is, we define the capacity of those systems by the bottleneck. So the bottleneck is the process that, that takes the longest. And if it is a step in the process, it defines the, the capacity of the entire process. So let's go through and, and look at a couple of examples here. Uh, so bottleneck analysis and the theory of constraints. The theory of constraints is sort of talking about how we address bottlenecks and, and, and how we think about bottlenecks. So each work area can have its own unique capacity. So if we have several steps, each one of those will have its unique capacity and the capacity of all of the system is the capacity of, this, uh, of the longest one in that. Capacity analysis determines the throughput capacity of workstations in a system. So we look at the capacity of the individual steps, and then we look at the capacity of the system, and I'll provide an example in a second. The bottleneck is the limiting factor or constraint. It is the one that takes the longest, is the slowest, because um, as an example, if uh, you and I were both driving from Guelph to Toronto uh, to start a meeting, uh, the uh, and I drive there in 50 minutes and you drive there in an hour, shortening my time to get there doesn't allow us to meet any earlier because you are the bottleneck because you take an hour. So the capacity of that is an hour. So that's how it is. Uh, and so a, a bottleneck has the lowest effective capacity in a system. So let's talk about introducing some basic concepts here. The process time of a station is the time to produce a unit at that single workstation. So the process time of the station is the is is how long each station takes uh, to to do what it does to the customer with the customer or to the product. The process time of the system is the time of the longest process in the system, the bottleneck, right? Because within a system there can be products at each stage in that system as they flow through, but those products can't go through any quicker than the slowest one. So the process time of the system is the bottleneck and the process cycle time is the time it takes for a product to go through the production process with no, with no waiting. So here we have a three station assembly line. Uh, station A takes two minutes. That's the process time for per unit. That's the process time for, for it, four minutes for B and three minutes for C. So those are the times for each of those uh, workstation. The process time for the system will be four because it is the longest, right? We can't, uh, four minutes per unit is the fastest that we can move things through here. Uh, and then, uh, and then two, four, uh, nine is the uh, is is the time in the whole system. Although, if this takes two minutes, uh, it will wait for two minutes until the product ahead of it is done. Uh, and so uh, that that concept was just with no waiting. The system process time is the process time of the bottleneck. We talked about that already. The system capacity is the inverse of the system process time. So if it takes uh, uh, 10 minutes to, to, if the system process time is 10 minutes, uh, 10 over 60 minutes is, 60 over 10 minutes is uh, the inverse of that. And so the system capacity is six units. The process cycle time is the total time throughout the longest path in the system. So let's do a couple of examples here. We have two identical sandwich lines. The li lines have two workers and three operations. All completed sandwiches are, are wrapped. So you take the order, it takes 30 seconds. 
then you have two lines that go simultaneously. Uh, get the bread 15 seconds, fill the bread 20 seconds per sandwich, we toast it 40 seconds per sandwich, and then we wrap it 37.5 seconds per sandwich. Now you might look at this and say, well, in this circumstance, toast takes 40 seconds per sandwich, but because we take one order and we assign it to one of those two lines, uh, we divide it by the number of uh, workstations that we're doing it. So let me show you here. The toast workstation has the longest processing time, 40 seconds. But because two lines each deliver a sandwich every 40 seconds, right? This is 15, 20. So in this line, toast is the bottleneck. But because we have two lines, the process time of the combined lines is 40 divided by two, two lines equals 20 seconds. So in the individual lines, toast is the bottleneck. But because we have two lines as part of the entire line, this process time for the toast step becomes 40 divided by two, which is 20. And in that circumstance, uh, wrapping and delivery take the longest and is the bottleneck because we only have one person doing that. So the capacity per hour is, uh, it takes us uh, 37.5 uh, seconds is the bottleneck at uh, capacity per hour is 3,600 seconds, the number of seconds in, a, in an hour, divided by 37.5 seconds, which is the bottleneck, is equal to 96 sandwiches per hour. So in this system, if it was always busy, if we had sufficient orders, because wrapping takes 37.5 seconds, we have uh, that, that way we can wrap 96 sandwiches per hour so the whole system can produce 96 sec uh, sandwiches per hour. And the process cycle time is 30 plus 15 plus 20 plus 40 plus 37.5 is 142.5. So the cycle time is, is worth remembering because it is the minimum time that it takes from order to wrap to complete uh, that sandwich. So that's how long a, a customer might have to wait to get to 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 uh, for that sandwich. Now there might be waiting in there, depending on how much flow we have. That is the minimum time to make a sandwich. So let's look at another one here. Standard process for cleaning teeth. Uh, cleaning and examining X-rays can happen simultaneously. So. Uh, you'll have a hygienist cleaning teeth and you'll have the uh, dentist looking at the x-ray. So we check people in two minutes per person. We take an x-ray that takes two minutes, develop the x-ray four minutes. Then we can clean while someone looks at the, at the x-ray. So those are two different people. They're happening simultaneously. Uh, in this case, uh, the dentist then eight minutes to, to, to check and then the, the person leaves and pays. So let's look at that system. You have to, in this case, in the previous case, you could get assigned to one path or the other. In this case, these paths happen simultaneously, so we think about them a little bit differently. We can't add them together and divide by two because it's, you still have to have that 24 uh, minute cleaning. It's just that someone else is looking at the x-ray at the same time. So the cleaning path is two plus two plus four plus 24 plus eight plus six is 46 minutes. And the x-ray exam path is 27 minutes. So that patient is gonna be there for 46 minutes. The longest path involves the hygienist cleaning the teeth, that takes 46 minutes. The bottleneck is the hygienist at 24 minutes. So the hourly capacity in this case is 60 divided by 24 is equal to two and a half patients, assuming that someone else is doing these activities and not the hygienist. If the hygienist is doing those activities too, then uh, that, will, that will change. So if the, if the hygienist is just doing this cleaning step, then we can do uh, two and a half patients per hour, 
and a patient should be done in 46 minutes, which is, which is how long uh, each of those processes take. So that's sort of very, some of the very simple analysis of, of systems that we can do. Now we've identified a product, uh, 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 a bottleneck, what do we do? And that's where we get into the theory of constraints. It involves a five-step process for recognizing and managing limitations. Identify the constraint. If we make improvements at a step that is not the bottleneck, we do not shorten the process. We do not, uh, we do not affect capacity. So in the last example, if we could develop the x-ray, because we've moved to digital, we can develop the x-ray in one minute instead of four, that patient may be there a little bit less time, but we can't put patients through any quicker because we still have that 24 minute teeth cleaning. So we have to identify the constraint, identify the bottleneck, just like when we did in project management where we had critical paths. In this case, we have to identify the bottleneck and we can't increase our capacity without addressing the bottleneck. Uh, and so develop a plan for overcoming, develop a plan for addressing that bottleneck, focus resources on accomplishing, on, 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 on changing that bottleneck, and we reduce the effects of constraints by offloading work and expanding capability. So, uh, you know, we could uh, in, introduce a second uh, hygienist where we wouldn't change the process before, but there would be two hygienists. And if then they would, you, would, you wouldn't have to go to both, you'd go to one or the other. And so we would shorten that bottleneck to 12. So those are the sorts of things we need to think about. Once you've overcome, right, at some point we will shorten that enough that something else will become the bottleneck. And then if we've done that, we can't continue to shorten that because we have a new bottleneck. And it's like a second critical path in project management. So once we've overcome it, we go back to step one and find new constraints. So managing bottlenecks, we have to look at the system. We have to identify the bottlenecks and then think about how we can improve them. We also want to release work orders or introduce patients or introduce clients or customers into a service at the pace set by the bottleneck. So we know that we'll have some people who are underutilized or some steps in the process that are underutilized. But if we have people introduced at a rate faster than the bottleneck can do it, we run into problems. Lost time at the bottleneck represents lost time for the whole system. So if we have, it's, it's like slack in project management. If we have a problem at the bottleneck, the whole system slows down. If we have a problem at, at a step that isn't the bottleneck, it doesn't necessarily change our capacity. Increasing the capacity of a non-bottleneck station, as I said before, is a mirage. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't change our capacity. Uh, and increasing the capacity of a bottleneck increases the capacity of the whole system. So this is a quick introduction into bottleneck management uh, if you have questions, please ask.